welcome to another episode of How to Build Rockets. In this episode, we will be covering interplanetary missions. Now, the rocket that I've built for this mission is a three-stage rocket. It consists of a booster stage, which is used to get off the launch pad and out of the atmosphere. It has four small nozzle engines, a orbital insertion stage, which is used to get from a suborbital trajectory into orbit around Drew, and a service module, which has a very efficient vacuum engine and is designed to take our rocket from Drew to Silero, which is the target planet for this mission. The payload for our rocket will be a landing probe. It is a small probe with four landing legs, four engines, uh, and a set of lights, solar panels, cameras, and other equipment necessary for a successful mission. I will be getting more into how to build these kind of probes in a different video, but for now, that's all you need to know. And last but not least, of course, we have the fairing. Now the fairing is what protects the payload during uh, exit from the app. Once our booster stage has gotten our apoapsis, which is our highest point in the orbit outside of the atmosphere, we're going to burn completely flat and let the inertia of our rocket carry us into space. Once we've left the atmosphere, I'm going to set a burn node at our apoapsis and drag the prograde slider until we are in orbit. With that, we will start our burn and lock it in, warp to the node, and ignite the engines. Now, the computer will handle the rest of the orbital insertion and it will put us into orbit around Drew. We might have to make some corrections, but it'll get us close enough. There we go, so we're in orbit. Now, we're going to use the last little bit of fuel in the stage to adjust the orbit, make it circular, and um, just finish it out. Separate the stage, separate the fairing. Now we have our service module separate from our booster stages and we are ready to go with the rest of the mission. I'm gonna deploy the uh, solar panels and get us ready to go. Now, zooming out of the map, we're going to look at the other orbits of the different planets. So you'll see Drew's inner orbit there and Silero is the orbit around that. Now we need to get from Drew to Silero and because we're ahead of Silero, we actually need to warp time until we're behind Silero. Because we are in a lower orbit, we are moving faster than Silero is, so we need to be behind it so that when we leave from Drew, we catch up to Silero, and just as our orbits are intercepting, our craft will meet the planet, and we will be captured by it. So here I've created a burn node at the midnight point around Drew, and I'm just adjusting and tweak tweaking it to get it to a uh, position where we actually intercept with Silero. I'm going to make another one and drag it out and you'll see as I move my cursor around our trajectory you can see where our satellite will be and where Silero will be at that point in time. And I'm going to keep tweaking it until I get a intercept with Silero. Just there you'll see that the orbit lines shook a little bit. That tells me that we actually have an intercept and you can see now where our path will go through Silero's sphere of influence. So I'm going to make a couple more adjustments, uh, try and get that path as close to the planet as possible so that we have the most efficient path coming into contact with the planet. Now that I've got that, I'll lock the burn in, time warp to it, and start the engines. Now we're going to burn for 1.7 minutes to get a escape trajectory from Drew and a transfer orbit into Silero. So it's going to burn, I'm going to slow it down, cut the engine, and see where we are. Okay, so the computer was a little off. It overshot by just a bit, so we are going to create another burn node to make an adjustment burn for this. I'm going to select it again and tweak it a little bit, uh, maybe change the camera angle until I get a good view of what I'm doing. My goal here is just to drop the periapsis of our orbit beneath uh, a thousand kilometers. 
so that we're using less fuel once we're actually at Silero to slow down. With interplanetary missions like this, the earlier you make your the less it'll cost. Uh, and when I say cost, I'm talking about delta V. You can think of delta V as the amount of control you have over your mission. If you have a lot of delta V, you can do a lot of different maneuvers. Each maneuver costs a different amount of delta V. In this case, a uh, change in trajectory is very cheap. And here we are, we're around Silero now, and our, you can see that our orbit gets us pretty close to it. Uh, we're gonna make a couple more adjustments. So way out here, I'm going to bring the orbit to a more polar orbit, and we're gonna bring it in closer to the planet. Now my goal is to put us into a polar orbit around Silero and land on the North Pole. So we're gonna do that by tweaking it there, and then at the periapsis of our uh, intercept, we're going to create another retrograde burn, which is going to put us in a low Silero orbit. And I'm going to tweak it again a little bit. I've got the orbital insertion burn, but I want to make sure that I've got the right inclination for that orbit so that I'll actually fall onto the North Pole. Tweak it again, we're a little bit off, and there we go. That puts us in the desired orbit, which is a high inclination around the pole. I will time warp to our first adjustment, which is a very short burn, pretty quick. Then we will time warp to our orbital insertion burn, which brings us in nice and close to the planet. And here it comes, getting close now. You can see the planet getting bigger. We'll finish the time warp with the computer and start the engines. Now this is the largest burn in our um, movements around Silero because it is the one that's killing all of our velocity. Relative to Silero, we were going very, very fast because we were on an interplanetary trajectory. So now that we've decelerated, we're in orbit around Silero, um, we can do the rest of the mission, land on the planet. I'm going to create another burn node, which will adjust our orbit just a little bit more to put us on a suborbital trajectory, a collision course with the planet. And I'm also going to tweak it until we are um, actually landing on the polar ice cap, which you can see there at the top. You'll notice that our suborbital trajectory actually overshoots the polar ice cap. And the reason for this is that as we're approaching the surface, we'll encounter the atmosphere. And the atmosphere is going to slow us down, which is going to bring our suborbital trajectory back. So if we overshoot it, then when we hit the atmosphere, the atmosphere will bring us back to where we actually are. Now that we're on our suborbital trajectory, we can eject the service module since we have no use for it anymore, and it is just our probe and our heat shield. Now, as we're entering the atmosphere, the heat shield is going to convert the kinetic energy of our motion into thermal energy, and it's going to slow us down. As we're slowing down, we're coming back onto our target right where we want to be. Uh, we finish slowing down, the heat shield has done us no more good, we're going to eject it and deploy our parachutes. Now the parachutes are going to carry us down until we're just over the surface of Silero. We're going to wait until we're about a thousand meters up, we're going to pull the parachutes back in, and we're going to engage our landing thrusters. The landing thrusters are what's going to take us the last thousand meters to the surface and drop us gently, hopefully, onto the surface. As we're falling, we're going to deploy the landing legs to cushion our fall and increase the thrust to the landing engines, bringing us down very gently, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10 meters up, and bounce off the surface gently before coming to a stop. And with that, we've successfully landed on another planet. We can go to the camera on our lander to get a first-person point of view of what the lander is seeing and take a look around at our surroundings. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel for more videos explaining how to play simple rockets. And as always, thanks for watching.